Let's wait maybe one more minute. Okay, let's, uh, let's get started. So hello everyone, welcome to today's Games Decisions and Network Seminar. It's my great pleasure and honor to introduce our speaker today, Professor Na Li from Harvard. So Professor Li is a Gordon McKay Professor in Electrical um, uh, Engineering and Applied Mathematics at Harvard University. She received her bachelor degree in mathematics from Zhejiang University in 2007 and PhD degree in Control and Dynamical Systems from Caltech she was a postdoc associate at MIT from 2013 to 2014. Uh, her research lies in control, learning, and optimization of network systems, including theory development, algorithm design, and applications to real-world cyber-physical systems. She has received uh, many awards, including the NSF Career Award, a uh, uh, Cyber Young Investigator Award, especially the Do uh, Donald Ekman Award. Uh, along with some other words. Today, she will be talking about uh, gradient play in multi-agent stochastic games, stationary points, and convergence. Before starting, let me repeat a brief like reminder for the audience. Please remain muted during the talk. If you have any uh, questions during the talk, please type them down in the chat box. We will relay them to Professor Lee. We will also have a Q&A session in the end of the talk. So please feel free to raise your hand and we will unmute you to ask the questions. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming uh, Professor Lee. Professor Lee, the floor is yours. Thank you, Peqing, for the introduction. And thank you for the audience who are watching the virtual talk. It's a great pleasure to share some of our recent work with everyone. Uh, but I would like to apologize ahead that because this work is really our latest new work. We just finished the paper about 10 days ago and I just finished the slides about half an hour ago. So the work and the talk probably still at its premature phase. You might find some typos or arrows in, this, in the talk, but I really appreciate the opportunity to exchange the ideas with everyone. So I haven't worked on in games for, I guess, about 10 years or more than 10 years. So I'm, I'm like excited to come back working in games. So this is a great opportunity for me to ask him for feedback. And also because we are just starting doing this project, we are happy to collaborate if you find the work interesting. Uh, before I start the talk, I also would like to thank two of my amazing students, Ren Yu and Zhao Ling, who are the main contributors of this work. And I believe Ren Yu is in the audience. So if you guys ask questions, she probably can ask, answer questions in the meantime. So without further ado, I'm going to start. Let me see. Oh, I cannot return to my screen. Should be good. Great. So I will start with a, like a brief big vision that's motivated this work. So in the past decades, we have seen major revolutions in sensing communication and computation, and they have boosted our abilities of doing the real-time monitoring and real-time control of complex systems. So because of all those progress, like we are studying kind of putting the smart in to all the systems we can see, smart grid, smart transportation, smart industry, or smart cities. I, at one hand, we know all the devices can give us the controllability, give us more data to analyze, and we hope to making the system being smarter, more autonomous. But the question is, with all the devices, can we guarantee, are we guaranteed that we can make the system being smarter? So when we look into the news, right, I think you, um, some news are just like last week I Googled the news and I can find like what's the status of the recent days. Like we can realize we are still at the beginning stage of transforming the system to be a smarter ones. Like for the energy systems, 
as beginning of this year, so Texas has to do the rolling blackout because of the winter storm. And for the self-driving car, at one time, we are, everyone is getting excited. But on the other hand, how exactly is the self-driving car going to change our driving behavior? Are we really going to reduce the time in mobility or, or is actually going to making the travel traffic worse? So all those news kind of posing the questions is how can we really coordinate and control the connected devices? I think that's also one goal of this similar series, like the, the, making decisions over the large scale networks. So back to this kind of vision. So what's happening? I come from control background. So from the control background, like take a deeper look of what is happening right now. So at one time, we have more and more sensors and those sensors can monitor the local situations in real time, and they pass information to either the edge devices or the data centers. So decision can be made and passed to the edge actors to conduct the decisions. So it's fit to our decision-making, like the natural decision-making feedback loop nicely. But the key difference is this. So when we look into the framework, so we have sensors and edge actors almost everywhere, and they are in huge number. They locate at different locations, generating a huge amount of real-time data. And on the one hand, we have the fast computation and the computation tools that can help us making decisions. But as other, on the other hand, so all these information technologies are still limited compared to the scale of the systems. So moreover, once all the active points in the system are connected, they keep introducing the random fluctuation into the system, making the system more and more complex and harder to model and harder to control. So here I highlight two key challenges as I relate to the talk. So large scale and limited com communication. So what those challenges tell us is we need to develop in this distributed decision-making role. Like if people are talking about learning, then we need do some distributed real-time learning. And we need to make a distributed decision-making. And how can we do it? So First question is, so what exactly is the distributed coordination that we want to do for the societal systems? So like, doesn't matter which kind of system. So the overarching goal is similar. How to design those local rules for decision makers so that the global system has a desired global behavior and what have a global behavior. So to work on this problem, like in my research group, we often start with understand the global behavior. Like what, do we want to achieve? So this is the one example in the high level. So collective behavior from the emerging system. So what we want to have here, the X can stand for the state of the environment or the state of the agent. And the EU can be the action that taken by each agent. So we can have objective function F and to de describe in what kind of objective, what kind of cost, what kind of reward we want to have. And we can have the constraint, like there can be couple constraint or local constraint. And I'm also highlighting there's something here, the delta, like this is uncertainty because even I love doing the modeling base method, I want to use the mathematical model to guide me design the algorithm, but they're always going to have uncertainty in the system. So what should we do? And so this is like kind of the first step, try to formulate the collective behavior, what's the question, what's the ultimate objective we really want to achieve. And on the other hand, like I was talking about the challenges in the large scale system, it has a lot of, devices has a lot of like communication, computation challenges. So what's constraint that's supposed to our local rules? So this is the high level, like we, when we individual device, individual nodes trying to make decisions is they only have local information and they can only talk to the neighbors or uh, talking to some data center that he connected. So those tells the communication information constraint. So this is like high level picture here, but the question it says like, even I start with a kind of behavior, I'm not talking about competitive. I'm just talking about cooperative, collective behavior, and I'm go ahead to design engineering rules. What kind of engineering rules we can have? But the question, even I start with that collective behavior, like what exactly the emerging behavior under these local rules? Like, can we really guarantee I can achieve the collective behavior we have once we have the information constraint? So this is kind of a bigger question that my crew have been working in the past. I would say like seven, eight years. And then like we had a lot of concrete work. So I'm just putting some concrete example to motivate the talk of today. Is it so we like, it's not just my group. I think many group have been recently like getting excited about the potential of the gradient based method. And like here, I'm not talking about optimization, the like optimization for the single state. I'm talking about like 
dynamical systems, right? So given the dynamical system here, I'm putting in like one picture. Roughly, I, I have a dynamical system that has a state X. So it's going to evolution according to the dynamics F, X, U. And the U here is a control action. So suppose we're talking about the multi-agent system. So we have individual nodes that they can take in their local action, noted by UI. And everyone will take the action and then they receive a cost. So the cost can be just depending on the local information or they can depending on the global information. So we have the cost and the policies. So as I mentioned, because the information constraint, so I like it's hard to assume in the system has a global view of what's going on. So he and the, he will take in his own local action. And another thing is here, every agent wants, if I really want to make a real time decision, I should just go ahead, follow my local decision rules. So it's also hard to start with a global policy than how each agent what policy should take so that like, the local policy means like two components here one is like only based on the local observation and the other one they're taking their policies independently so the objective i mentioned i right now i only care about global behavior like if i can engineer all the devices what can we have so this is the setting that like, if you have a question you can even like probably unmute yourself to ask a question because i really want to making sure the problem is clear so like this is a like um, framework. I think a lot of group have been working on a sim similar framework. So what kind of algorithms that people can have? So there's a policy gradient. So policy gradient, there are many, many different variations. And this is the overarching like policy gradient we have been doing, right? I this is my policy theta. So I'm going to take the gradient update. And to get the gradient update here, let me see what I can show the mouse. Here. So they will estimate the gradient and the different way to estimate the gradient. But this is roughly what the policy gradient looks like. But then the next question is when you open those papers, again, I'm not talking about games, just talking about the same like collaborative system, what kind of performance people usually can guarantee? So those are examples from my paper like last year. So when I look at my own results, so what I can really achieve, even I assuming I, I say I can achieve the global behavior, but what kind of global behavior I really can have? Sadly, they are only about the stationary point. I cannot really say anything about, hey, is my J is local optimal? Like even I cannot really say anything about local optimality. Right? So, and for those who are working on non-conversalization, I think that similarly when you work, they open those non-conversalization papers and usually people just guarantee the stationary conditions. And then for this control problem, again, similarly, we only guarantee the stationary conditions. But this is a question I want to ask is what are the stationary point? So why we ask this question? So the question come from here. So the two paper, I didn't put in details here. So one paper is talking about tabular MDP case. And the other one is talking about LQR case. And for the people, if you are working on the policy gradient for the reinforcement learning, like for the centralized case, the single agent one, the stationary conditions actually equivalent to the op optimal conditions. Right. So that's a great news for this kind of two set of problem. But then for the multi-agent cases, at least for my paper, I like, can we say anything else besides just saying the stationary condition? So that's the reason question for the multi-agent distributed control, what exactly the point that we achieved by doing the gradient descent? So like, I hope the motivation is uh, clear right now, as, I, as you can see. So for this work, we start with a cooperative setting. I just want to ask a question, what's other station in point? And so for those who are working in games, kind of naturally yelling, I think you should look into the natural equilibrium rather than the optimality anymore. But now it's like, I'm going to deal with the mark of the cast of games, what the natural equilibrium means, and what is the point that we can have? So that is the question we want to ask. And let me, before asking the question more formally, I want to give you a quick review of the stochastic game. So what is the multi-agent Markov decision process? Uh, like uh, Shapley in 1953 already had a paper kind of build a framework for stochastic games. So what's the element in this game? So for this element, what do we have? Similarly, first we have multi-agents. So we have an agent here. And uh, for each agent, they can, right now I'm only focusing on, like assuming even they can have access to a shared state space. So this is a shared state space S, and but everyone will take in their own action independently. So the AI is action by the agent I. 
And once everyone takes into action, the state will transition to the next state. And here the state transitions to the next state will depending on the joint action paid. So everyone will receive an award. Reward. So I'm not going to say like the dependency right now, the RI will depending on the state and joint action A, like kind of similar to the normal form games. So agent I is objective. So that's just kind of difference compared with the normal form games that has only a single shot is because I'm playing the game again and again, and the environment will change according to my action. So my objective is I want to maximize my long term reward. So the long term reward here I'm doing is I have a like, for this talk, we're only focusing on the discounting reward. So there's a gamma and gamma is more than one. So what the policy? So like this is a like something I'm going to compare with the centralized case. So as I mentioned, once we're dealing with the multi-agent, right? There are multiple constraints to kind of motivate us to only looking at the local policies. So the local policies here is every agent, they were observing the environment which assume that can share, everyone has access to the sharing environment information, and then they're taking their own local action AI. So that's the policy. And the policy going to be parameterized by some parameter, and you can pick what like the policy class, like according to your preference. So once everyone decides their own local policies, what's a joint policy? So joint policy is going to be the product of individual policies. And that's why I say here independently. And this is very similar to the normal form game. People just taking their own action um, like independently. So this is an element for the sarcastic games. And I hope it's clear. For the next one, and it's kind of similar, I think the next step like for the action, before making it complicated, talking about neural net, I'm focusing on the simple policies. The simple policies here, there's a like a determinist policy, just say, given the S, taking the action AI, but then the next level is I can do the mixed strategies. So for here, the mixed strategies compared with normal form game is I have a stake here. So the, I'm going to do the derived conversation for the policy. I mean, this, which is very similar to the mixed policies. So what this means is at, based on the S, there's a one probability that decide what kind of action AI I'm going to take. So for each action and each S, so there is one parameter decide what the probability I'm going to take in the action. And because like the, this probability, so I want all the summation going to be equal one. So there's some notations. So I'm going to uh, using the XI define the action set that I can take. And again, remember the action set here, the policy action set is the parameter of is a probability that I can take action AI given the state S. So like give a little bit more concrete. So compare with the centralized policy and the decision policy, that's because I'm going to keep using the word later on. So for the central policy, what it refers to is if they can jointly taking actions. So given the S and they can assign one probability to the joint action. Um, but for the decentralized local policy that I was mentioning before, so for each agent, I have parameter based like pi c dot i a i s. So the joint policy is going to be the product. If we try to see how many parameters I need to denote my strategies. So for the centrist case, this is, you can look at here, it's going to be blow up quickly with a number of agents. But then on the other hand, the local policies kind of keep at the linear scale. So there's a one motivation like, People talking like think about the centralized MDP. If I really want to reduce, like, to deal with the curve dimension T problem, like this is the one solution we can do. But the question is, once I limit my policy to this special class, what we will have? Can I like the optimality? I guess is definitely going to be go away. But then what are we going to have? So this is the policy we're going to focus today. Now. As I mentioned, right, because all the uh, work is motivated by like uh, the growing literature in the gradient policy, the policy gradient in the reinforcement learning. So the gradient play for the case again here, as you can, each agent once they update their parameter, they were taking the gradient update and do the projection back to the their admittable set. So um, another thing for this talk, I'm not going to talk about learning sample. So I, I would just focus on here. If I have the model, I just do the gradient 
play. So what will happen? So as I mentioned the question, right? So what the stationary, if this converge, it definitely then the convergent point is going to be the first order stationary point. But then what are those first order stationary point? What's the relation to the online game? Like, and are they really related to the mesh equilibrium or not? And lastly, I think more important thing is we want to understand the convergence. That's like, which point is going to converge? Is it really going to converge? So those are overall questions we want to ask. Before I'm going to give you guys some answers that we had recently. So we actually were, were very happy to find, like, I think, especially for the last component of the literature. So I think there is a uh, like growing interest these days that people studying, working on the stochastic game. And like, so the first stochastic game, the paper by Shapley is like 1953. And there are like some, some work during the, I think, uh, past decades. But recently, because of those multi-agent RL, I think it's also motivated to attract, attract other people coming to work in this problem. And so, and I want to highlight the last one, the Marco Potential Game um, by Leonardo and his co-authors. So we actually found the paper after we finished our paper. Uh, we are very excited to see that people working on very similar things. And there's uh, some difference and there are a lot of similarity. So I have like, <clears throat> Hope we will kind of talk more and to see what how much we can push for this kind of notion. So, like with that, I'm going to dive into the details for this to this talk. So, as you can imagine, for uh, similar to the normal form games, right? First, for the general game setting, like we can achieve something, but probably not much. And then for the like algorithm convergence, so potential game is a natural framework to asking what's is going to be the convergence. So similarly, we did the uh, two set of work. So first set, first set of work is we trying to see for the general stochastic game what we can have. And then we move to the more particular game that's macro potential game and to see what we, whether we can have additional property. And I will compare the stochastic game and the normal form game to give you more insight what's the, difficult, what's the difference and what's the major difficulty. So now let me, before talking about result, like, so this is unavoidable for those reinforcement learning thing, like or the MDP, we need to define some complicated notations. So I will do my best to explain the intuition behind those notations. So as we talked about before, for the stochastic game, for individual agent, the objective is to maximize the long-term reward. And this is like the value function given the state, like this is the long-term reward if I'm starting with state S, if I take the policy pi theta. So that's the value function, right? You don't need to remember the, the concrete details, like roughly the meaning of the each functions. And to like a lot of algorithm will come from to evaluate the Q function. So for the MDP, multi-agent MDP setting, we can define the Q function for individual agent as well. So what individual, Hydrant Q function is like start with the state S, start with this is the joint action A, and for the agent I, so what his long term reward. And you can look at the difference between the value function and the Q function is addition on the A, and like you can just take a relate them together. So, an additional thing like to compare like when people try to do the Q learning, other things, other advantage function is also use, useful notion to guide algorithm design, algorithm analysis. So the advantage function is just like, given the each state action pair, I want to see, do I have any improvement or not improvement, the difference. So that's why it's called the advantage function, just compare the QISA minus VICS. And there's another one because we're talking about long-term reward and the state will keep changing. And there's a like, in useful notion, this called state distribution. Uh, here, we're not talking about the marginal distribution as n. We just go ahead and de directly define the state with staycation distribution. And it's already discounted by the, our discounting reward. And this one can serve as a, hey, uh, the frequency of within state s. So like this is some preliminary definition here. And so once we compare the like, work with a multi-agent and a single agent. So there's some other things that's like, you can look at here, this is a theta is joint action, joint A. If for the agent I, if I want to think about, should I change my policy? Is another AJ is better? So 
And this one is a joint action profile, right? It's not really that much useful in my opinion. So that's why like another thing we defined, right? We just average the probability of everyone else action. So this is called average Q function. So for the average Q function right now, then like if I say the QI see that as AI, at least for this kind of number, it's only based on state, which I assume we can observe. And AI is my own action. So I can roughly the like the average Q function can kind of serve as a measure how good my action AI is. Right? I don't need to worry about others. That's kind of roughly high level intuition. That's why we call it that average. And similarly, we can define the average advantage function that can guide me to take the action AI. So um, like is a good thing is that even we define this way. So in turns out those uh, average advantage function, it still has a similar property like the advantage function for the central lies case. And this is the like property that's of the other, average of the wanted function. So don't need to remember this uh, like in details. Like in case you are familiar with MDP, so you probably find this is familiar. But what's here, I just want to show it has a property that can guide us to do the analysis. So for all the complete notation, and there's another thing I need to tell you is this, as I mentioned, right? So the reason I defined uh, the average Q function, average of the wanted function is to guide me to making my own decisions. So indeed, so for the policy gradient under the direct conversation, for the centrist case, it has for, through the algebra, like I can use in the Q function. So this is the global Q function and using the state distribution. So I can compute my gradient. And for the multi-agent MDP one, by introducing the average Q, average advantage function. So if I want to, as agent I, I want to compute my gradient similarly. I can use in my averaged individual Q function to do the grid update. So by introducing this notion, I can kind of compare my multi-agent with the centralized case. So now like this is some definition and that I think is a kind of a good time to kind of explain some difficulty compared with the stochastic gamma and normal form gamma. So I think there's a, um, this is actually what I learned by doing this project is we are beginning so once I see some result, hey, we probably can extend that one because the normal form gamma had this property, then the, that one should be similarly, right? It's going to be similar. It's just from action to policies and they should be similar. But here I'm going to say the fundamental difficulty in my opinion, right? For the normal form gamma, like when we take in the game theory class, so I said at the beginning, then when we try to compute the miss strategies, right? What's a miss natural equivalent? What do we usually do is like given the reward function, uh, if this is a mixed strategy, so I can compute my mixed reward in this way. So this is a very nice form. It's a linear combination of the reward from the pure strategies. So at the beginning, I was expecting I can have some pure policies. And then for my mixed policies, I probably can do something similarly, and then a lot of results can hold. So unfortunately, like here, I just put in the uh, convergent mass to tell you it's like in almost impossible to have that kind of form, right? The long-term reward is expectation of the infinite sum. And once I change my policy, the state trajectory is going to be changed. It's very unclear what's the relation. If I can like try to study the connection between my mixed policies and my determinist policies. So what I want to say is that there's not much linear combinations I can have to allow my analysis. So like a lot of intuition from the normal form again, probably is not going to hold for the sarcastic again. So then how does the difficulty now come back? So why is still possible to have some property? So the intuition should come from like the grain domination property. So back to the MDP for this uh, single agent one, I think there are a lot of uh, progress as I mentioned, like, for the single agent, people can show the equivalence between the stationary point and the optimal point. And the reason because they can find the gradient domination property for this online game. Like for the LQR, it had this property. And um, for the centralized MDP, like um, Algorwa's paper, it's also find a similar property. What this can do is it can relate the difference between the cost to the first order condition of the reward. 
So why this condition is useful, like by looking at here, so this is the difference between the two policies, theta prime, theta, and then once I compare, I can upper bound it by a first order conditions. So for the first order stationary point, it's going to say, hey, this one is going to be smaller equal than zero. And what that means, it means that theta star is going to be optimal. And because that I means how people derive this one, like by doing the performance difference lemma. And then we can derive the gradient domination property. So now back to our multi-agent, right? Can we have a similar properties? So before that, now I'm formally defined the Nash equivalent. So given a policy, so this is the individual's policy, theta i. The Nash equivalent means my current policy, theta i, is optimal against all the other policy options. A three Nash equivalent just making this one be the street inequality and like Q Nash equivalent. I kind of mentioned that before, like correspond to a determinist policy, means the theta i s will give me a concrete action a i, not a probability. So and fully mixed Nash equivalent means hey, like it's never going to tell me concrete thing what a i I'm going to take is has a probability as entire action set. So that's a fully mixed Nash equivalent. So all the different Nash equivalent is actually going to play some role to describing their look convergence properties. So I will come back to that later. So that first question, and the first order station conditions, this is still similarly, like compute my gradient. And is this one, like this is from the local probability conditions by looking at my theta i. So this is from the optimality conditions, but only first order, there's no patient. Like does this first order condition say anything? So now back to the first question is once we look at here, so one direction is very easy because the natural definition naturally implies it should hold the first order session conditions. But the other way is not obvious because this means my theta i star is optimal among all the theta. And this is like, if you can take in the theta star, think about that if it's an interior point, then that means the gradient is equal zero, but that's just the first order session conditions. This one not going to say much about even local optimality even for the one agent I. But what is interesting for the multi-agent MDP is like these two actually going to be equivalent. And again, as I mentioned, this is for the general game setting. We haven't imposed any conditions yet. And why is true? So the general multi-agent MDP, as I like showing here, is also has some gradient domination property. And the gradient, the only difference compared to the single agent right now is then be the JIJI, JI, and this is going to be every person's individual's partial gradient. And if you want to say why this implies, it's kind of like just a one line proof, because if this is a station condition, this is more than zero, and then the theta is going to be an equivalent. Like I can relate the difference immediately. So for some of you probably want to uh, like a little bit interesting to compare the difference between the single agent and multi-agent in the proof. So the proof very similarly, but the key as I mentioned before is actually here using the, uh, for us, we use the average advantage function and average Q function. And like first we have, we derive our own performance difference lemma by using the other average advantage function. So this is kind of the counterpart compared with the centralized MDB. Once we have that, then it just like kind of follows similarly proof ideas as the centralized MDP, like all those things are kind of outbound. So like kind of change the advantage function, the Q function, and then trying to figure out some property here. So eventually like it's a proof that can be very quick once we have the performance difference memo. So this is a gradient domination. I would say that's a really nice property to relay the, con relay the condition between the stationary point and the natural equivalent. And something, as I mentioned, like we, we haven't, this is just saying they are equivalent, but they can be a lot stationary point. And definitely there can be a lot of like Nash equivalent. So I want to put in one thing here is this kind of proof is kind of also tell us a little bit more about the structure of Nash equivalent. So once I look into here, if it's Nash equivalent, then this one's more uh, equal than zero. And then there's some like, look at here, there's a max over this one or the reward function, you can see like the positiveness. So what this says is by just looking at the proof of the gradient domination, it tell us structure. Once we put in the natural condition into it, it's well 
PowerS was an advantage average function what the property should satisfy. And furthermore, what is tell us is a property of the Nash equivalent. And like, if you trying to think, relay the connection between normal form gamma, because that's what I have been keep thinking is like for the normal form gamma, like the existence and there's some pure strategies and mixed strategies and the different properties I want to see, like, can we say something about the Nash equivalent for the stochastic gamma? So this is something we have by checking the proof for the grand domination. So this is the first property, as it says, is if it's a theta is a natural equivalent, the advantage function will always be non-positive. And if I have a property that you're taking one action, that means that the advantage function is actually going to be zero. So it's like kind of, as I mentioned, the advantage function can use a single node to guide me to change my action. And this is kind of another evidence to say in that. So again, this is some algebra proof I like you can, I'm roughly showing here is based on the property of the individuals, A function and the Q functions. And by, and like, I'm not going to talk about the algebra or complicated things here. And this is another thing when I also come, come from this kind of relations. So what we can say further is this, so the strict natural equilibrium, this is kind of very similar to uh, the normal form gamma. The strict natural equilibrium for the stochastic gamma, they're also just pure natural equilibrium. And the what out action come from that state S is the maximal of the advantage function. And furthermore, the advantage function actually just happened to be equal to zero. And for every other action, the advantage function will be strictly smaller than zero. So this is a strict natural equilibrium. And because of the, we can show strict natural equilibrium are the pure strategies, the pure policies. So then when we talk about convergence, like there's a next level question, we really want to understand the gradient play. So does this convert to any point? Um, like this is a, something from the normal form game. Like this is even because we know once my state has only has one state, my stochastic gain will become a normal form gain. So like the bad news about normal form gains will naturally applies to our stochastic gain setting. So for that setting, like this is just some picture probably uh, from the game theory textbook. You can also find other pictures. The green play not necessarily going to converge. It can even have a limit cycle. It can diverge. Uh, and different point can have a different kind of local stability property. And this is why I say the structure of the natural problem is useful to understand this some local stability. So back to the street natural problem I mentioned before, the street natural problem is actually locally stable on the gradient plane. So there's a, uh, some other algebra notations in the paper is we can also compute the convergence rate and the intuition actually come from because the advantage function is going to be strict more than zero for all the other actions. So that's give us some buffer to improve if I start with a policy that is very close to the strict natural equivalent. And so, and I write down here. So this I can use the advantage function, the gap between them to define kind of like as an indicator of my convergence region. And this one will also tell us how much improvement if I take this one gradient step. So I'm not going to show you the mass details. I'm going to like move to the example to give you some intuitions and like what we see from looking into the circus again. And so the this example, like multi-stage prisoner dynamo, like so if just one stay is the same thing as the prison dynamo. So what do we change is this. So let me go through the example, two agent, one, two. And for each agent, they can take in two actions. So one action is cooperation and the one action is betray. So, and, so, and the difference here is I have a state. So what the state defined here, the state is kind of like some indicator about whether the agent they cooperate at previous stage or not. So if the stage, this one equal one, the state equal one means at previous stage, both of them taking the cooperation action. And S equal two means they are not gonna trust each other because from the previous step, at least one agent is not taking the cooperation action. So we put in the noise indicator here, right? So sometimes it's not really going to be affirmative. So this is like just, 
putting some noise indicator to show how strong the signal is. So the state transition, as I draw the picture here, right? If all both of them taking the cooperative action going to become S equal one, if one agent not taking the action, agent equal S equal two. So as I said, like for the reward, the reward right now is the same reward as the prison dynamic. So with that, if both of them cooperate, they're not going to get too much punishment. And if one betray, one cooperate, so then the person who cooperate actually getting a big penalty and the other one get a free of it. And if both of them betray, then like, okay, not too bad, but definitely worse compared with them both of them cooperate. So this is a prison dynamic. And um, from the prison dynamo, the normal form again, remove the state. Only there should be three states, no? One uh, for both defect. Colin, can you? Yeah, uh, so I was saying there should be three states. No, they are, defect. so here, my state, only two states. So look at here. So if, if just, if one agent's not going to cooperate, then they go into the not trust each other state. Yeah, two states. I see, but- uh, Yeah, only two states. We are not making this one too complicated. Just like adding one state to see whether we can change anything. Okay, okay. fine, thanks. But yeah, only two states, okay? That's a good question. I, I really want you guys getting it clear because the next time I'm gonna show, so for this one, for the prison dynamo, like look at this one, if I don't have a state, so the next equilibrium is betray and betray, like def defect, defect, this one. So that's a, from the like game theory textbook. We know there's only like there's a one, Strict natural equilibrium is this guy. Both of them betray. So the interesting, once we just introduce the state, then that state is kind of natural, right? So I just like, if both of them cooperate next phase, I will trust each other because both of us pre, like cooperate last time. So the, but once we add in that additional state, just using that one to guide my decision making. So then they are, there are two strict natural equilibrium in the setting. So one mean this one's again, of course, it's going to be an natural equilibrium. Both of them never going to cooperate regardless what's the state. And so there's another new natural equilibrium emerging from this sarcastic game is they cooperate when the state equal one. And for the other one, if previous time the other person not cooperating, I'm not going to cooperate. So this is another like natural equilibrium. And we call it a cooperative natural equilibrium because as a cooperative state, they cooperate. So uh, like, so that's one thing I found is very interesting is by even introducing the natural state notion, we have a different kind of like natural equilibrium, like defined landscape geometry. And indeed, once we do the gradient play and you can see something interesting here, and for the convergence of natural equilibrium, is like the two agents. So if I start with this one, like that, am I really going to that point? So indeed, under the gradient play with that kind of additional state, I can kind of lead both agents to cooperate. And the state will mostly stay in the state one, cooperate state. And another, as I mentioned, the delta thing can indicate the convergence region. And we put in like change the, like the belief, like how much you really strongly believe people will cooperate if both of them cooperate right now. So if this number is smaller, that means it's like becoming more extreme. Like if I take in A equal one, then we'll go to S equal one. So if this one's smaller, so this point, the cooperative natural equilibrium, the convergence region getting bigger. And all the things are consistent with our theoretical analysis. With that, I'm kind of closing my first part of talk about the general, but I think there are more questions. As there's a lot of questions in my mind, like compared with the normal form again, what can be extended, what can't, uh, why was the major difficulty? And you can see for the simple examples, it will change a lot of things about the landscape of the problem. So now the next one, I'm going to move to the next about, because as we still don't have any kind of like convergence or global convergence in theorem. So, so the next thing we try to uh, think about the potential game. So this is a recap of the normal form potential game, right, there's no state. So what the potential game means is if one agent just deviate his own action, and this is a potential function can be aligned with the unilateral change of individuals change, right? Because of this, like, joint fee function is 
can lead to like a lot of nice property, especially in uh, developing the algorithm and studying the convergences. And the congestion game here, and uh, like it's projection game and even the prison dynamic game that I showed before, they actually, they are potential games. There are lots of useful, interesting potential games examples. So the natural thing what we want to follow, like, hey, for the uh, macro potential game, looks like naturally what I need is this. So my long-term reward, my long-term reward, if I change my action, just one agent taking my own action, and I can find some like potential function. That can be a, the change of the potential function is aligned with the metaphor change. Right, so that's the kind of natural thing I want to have. So because of that, like, we just go ahead to define our potential function, the macro potential function, using that property we want to have. And like we want the cast again is a potential function. If I can have a, like potential functions by making sure the long-term reward is aligned with the long-term fee, it's like all these expectations summation means the long-term, long-term. So, and if I have this property, right, I can define the total potential function. That's what I need before as a long-term reward, a uh, long-term fee. And if I have this kind of like property, then the property I want to have, the JI, once I change my own local action, so what the change of the total potential function is going to be aligned and by, that, by that way, my gradient update is aligned with the gradient update of the total potential function capital fee. Right, so that's the thing I want to have. And like, if I have that property, I naturally have that. And then this is the same property similar to the potential gam from the normal form gam. So I can show that the maximizer of the fee is a Nash equilibrium, and that is a pure Nash equilibrium. I can take a determinist policy to do it. So those are good things. And an additional thing I want to say, because once we have this one, how do I know there is such fee? So similarly from the uh, like potential gain literature, so like we know to judge what the system is a potential function, we can just look at the path. So what the path means, this is a joint strategist. And at each, like for this path, the only one agent change his action. And closed path means eventually coming back. And the simple closed path means there's no repetitive strategies during the path. So from the, if it's a potential function gam, I can compute the change of my, like this kind of long-term reward during each pass. Uh, here, the pass is a change of strategies pass. So it should be zero. So, and this one can also be extended to the MPG we defined and proof is the same proof. But now this is the interesting questions. The interesting question is this. So now we, we I defined the complicated definition of the MPG. But now if and there's a small fee there, like does this mean if at each state I have a potential function, then is my stochastic gamma an MPG? You guys can see the question, right? If you want to, you can post your answer by click. I think there's something you can click yes or no. So the first question you can think, like does this good? And you will okay, if you describe, I don't think so. This looks like very weak condition. You probably need a more. So I need additional conditions. If there exists a fee, and then regardless the state, right? The state can change and that can still be aligned. Is this a potential MPG, macro potential game? At each state, I have this property. Again, think about your answer. I'd love to see if you want to post your re reaction. The other one. Like if you think that's still not weak, I'm putting up very strong conditions here. If the reward, it, it depends on the S and they have a potential function. Look at here, I mean, I mean really get rid of the S, like the prison number example I showed to you. It's the reward, it depends on the S. And the reward is constant among, along the trajectory. This is a potential function. So like, yeah, I really hope the talk can be in person. I can see your reaction. So like the sad news is even for the strong condition, the last one is still not going to be MPG. You might like ask why? So there's definitely like technical thing. You can uh, write down all the definition for the long-term reward. And I can show you examples. This is the prison dynamic. For this one simple thing, I remove the like noise indicator, just go strictly with S equal one, S equal two. If they cooperate previously, not cooperate, then go to this one. Very simple game. And this one is a potential, like because the reward is 
independent of the state is a potential function at each state. And what we can do like, so this is actually algebra proof. What we did is we, we just find the path when the agent change the action and we compute the change of the like individual reward like along the path. And unfortunately, they are not equal to zero. So back to the thing I want to highlight here. So you want like define the uh, potential MPG condition, it looks like a natural. But then once we look into the connection between the uh, P, like potential function, it's become complicated. Like what kind of condition do we need at each stage and the uh, like long-term reward has a potential function, it's unclear. And so even for this one, like we were actually very disappointed when we find out this, this one, like even it depends on the state, still not. So, uh, okay, there are definitely some positive news. And so for this one, as I mentioned, we also found uh, the other uh, like authors that have a similar paper on PG. I would like to give credit to them. So if you check their paper, they had uh, like other examples to show. And the examples they put in, like they had one proposition for some sufficient condition. So this sufficient condition is interesting. Look at, as I mentioned, so if each state is as a potential function, like this one, the first one I put in here, and then, if the state transition is independent of the action, then this one is okay. I also want to say like they have another special condition, but that sufficient condition probably not working because it's actually violated our kind of example. So that's a, it's very easy to making some like um, like not like make, making some like careless conjecture once we want to build a connection between the potential function potential gamma and the macro potential gamma. And so this is the one, like one on the one side, right? Can we say the gamma is a macro potential gamma by looking at each state? But on the other hand, there's another question, right? So for the macro potential gamma, does this need to be potential gamma at each state? Again, not necessary. So like, um, Neona, they have a nice example there. I really like their example. So, and you can, see here, so I was putting this um, slide to like post question to the audience. There's a lot of like, if we were making the sarcastic game, because I think the potential game is useful because it's capturing a lot of real examples, like uh, especially contraction game. Uh, I was trying to uh, build in sarcastic contraction game, making sure it's a, a macro potential game. At least right now, we haven't really found the, the way to do it. And you can see the difficulty here from the size. So I, I do believe there's a lot of work to do like probably change the definition for the macro potential gam, uh, building some other things to make it work and useful. So like, um, so, but back to here, I like, since we have that potential function, so it's um, to prove the convergence becoming easy, like kind of similar to the central case. So if the function is a macro potential, if the gam is a macro potential gam, and then we can follow similar proof as a centralized MDP to show the global convergence. And the global convergence, um, put in the slides and the paper has more details. And what, what depending, there's a, some constant number from the game itself. And there's a, something about the rate I want to highlight. If you remember at the beginning, I compared the centralized learning and, and, and the individual learning, talking about parameter set, right? So if I want to read it in with the centralized case, the entire par parameter dimension is going to be S times the product of AI. But because for the local policies, now I'm reducing my local policies to be a special class. So my parameter number becomes smaller. And it's nice that like this nice pop, like um, dimension reductions, property still holds or, or like still being applied to our convergence rate. Right, this is from product of individual agent I to the summation. And like, you can ask some question, right? So here uh, I talk about the policy is just individual taking, like every agent taking independent policy. If we want to making sure the natural equilibrium can do better, we can make in the policy class be a little bit more complicated. Like, so a few agents, they can group together and take into actions. So that can do trade off between the complexity of the algorithm and the efficiency of the outcome. So, and the proof is kind of, as I mentioned, standard compared to the um, 
non-convertibilization with the smoothness property with the grain domination property. We can also show the smoothness property of the MPG gam. So uh, like this uh, some study we tried and this is the result we have right now. It's about convert like we, we talk only talk about convergence. The convergence is like going to convert to some natural curve. Which natural curve? Unclear. So we did some study by just looking at the natural curve itself. So what's the conclusion we have is this. The strict natural curve is going to be locally stable. And they are actually strictly local maximum of the potential function. And so, and then for the, another interesting dimension for the fully mixed natural curve, which you can show they are really set, settled point. So the gradient play not going to convert to any of those points. But the gradient play will do this one, the strictly local uh, maximal of that this means the strict natural curve. So at least that's is kind of part of some good news of it, but everything of every property I'm showing you here, they're just a local property. So in the end, I'm going to similarly show you one example and that's almost close the top. And we just extend the uh, like two agent coordination again to the state based. And we're just introducing additional state in this way is there's a uh, like the coordination and they need, they want to go to the uh, same location. So the location here, function A and B, now I'm kind of using that as a state. So what the state here says is for each agent, I have one state. So if I take a action one, then I can go to location A. If I take action two, then I go to location B. So the state has, each agent has one state. So the state transition, similarly, we adding some noise parameter Right, to see how those noise parameter can change the game and also making the uh, like all the state can be uh, visited during for the MDP analysis. And the reward is similar to the coordination game that like if they both go to the same location, they have a larger reward. If they go to different location, they have a smaller reward. Right, it's, is this game like clear? So when we study the Nash Crib, uh, there's a lot of questions. Yes, Colin. Yeah, in, in, can you go, yeah, this uh, game is uh, the states you choose here are a bit different from the way you chose the states for the prisoner's dilemma, the iterated prisoner's dilemma. Here you're choosing basically the actions as the states. Yes, almost like that, yes. Uh, so why it is? Uh, so this is the game that we made up. And why is it I so this one, once I take an action, so I'm just like kind of calling this, um, so, Short answer is, so for, for here, my decision making is based on the state. So I'm putting the action the, from previous stage as my state. And then what means is when I take my action, I can take my action based on the action that has been taken previously. Okay. So um, like, so um, that connection with a normal form game, like the coordination game, if I just talking about learning, so what kind of learning I can do. For that learning, right, people can add a history into the learning, adding those. You can wheel this as, as kind of one step memory. Yeah, I get it. One thing I wanted to ask, what's the idea behind choosing how I make up my states? I Means what should be at the back of your mind? Because that you can formulate many types of permutation combination say choosing two states for any game yes yes yeah you can you, you can do others so this is just a one simple example we uh we we, uh, we took and then to show you the interesting thing compared to the normal form game yes so like uh, and there's a uh, I actually like i really want like say like so once we move into the uh sarcastic game there's a lot of things that we actually can play and there's a lot of messages i Right now, I'm un, like for me, I'm unclear about what like see here. This is almost the same thing as the original one, but once I just doing this kind of uh, simple thing, the geometry changed. Yeah, so 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 definitely you can play with that. Yes, yeah, so thank you for the question. But let me do this one. You can see what I'm what I'm talking about. So this one, like I, I did a like uh, we study like the natural equilibrium will definitely become like much. There are many many more natural equilibrium compared with the original like uh, stateless normal form game. And we start with a fully mixed natural curve, but as I mentioned before, the fully mixed natural curve is a set of point. And indeed, so you can look at here, it's going to leave from this natural curve, the fully mixed one, going into a pure natural curve, which is strict. As I mentioned, there are lots of pure natural curve. So we did some other random trial. And for each of this is a total reward, like because people are interested about parts of an, an, uh, anarchy, right? And look at here, 
right? It's like it can convert to any kind of point, but all the point is kind of uh, corresponding to one pure Nash equivalent. They are strict Nash equivalent, but they are a lot, even just by introducing that kind of dumbing state. But it's actually not really dumbing. You can look at here once they make a decision. Um, but indeed, yeah, like because we have global convergence analysis from beginning, right? So each point is a Nash equivalent. If you look at here, this is a Nash equivalent gap. So I just hope like we doing this simple example to show like there's a lot of things we can um, like study and probably, and, and they will lead to very interesting uh, like intuition or like will lead to very interesting observation when we think about multi-agent decision making. Right? Because when people are making decisions, it's not stateless. I will use in the state, I mean, probably for my history, and those things will change the geometry and will change everything. And so this is a, a close of my talk as like, again, there are lots of future work. I'm happy, like if you guys are interested, I'm happy to uh, hear from you and to collaborate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Lee, for the uh, great talk. So uh, is there any questions from the audience? You can just uh, feel free to unmute yourself and you can ask questions. So maybe I have a quick question. So you're talking about like the decentralized, uh, you, you call it a decentralized uh, update or decentralized policy gradient in this case, uh, in the, in the, at least in the model-based setting, which is something you talk about. Uh, when you are doing the update, you need to know the opponent's strategy and also uh, uh, observe that, right? So I'm, I'm curious how to implement this in a decentralized, a really decentralized setting. So um, because you, I asked me that average, you call it averaged uh, Q, but we call it actually a counter, uh, counteractual Q. So mm -hmm. to ask me that you need to observe or need, you need to know the opponent's strategy. I mean, yeah, policy, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So um, I think you were referring to the gradient update, right? Right, right, right. the gradient update. Uh, so like, I think to answer your question before, I want to clarify, I think while we're doing this one, when people say decentralized decision making, now in my opinion, there are kind of two dimensional messages. So one dimensional messages is about when I'm really making my decision, how much uh, like the, I really want to do using the local information that I have to allow me to take an action. And the other one, I think for today's talk, I'm talking, focusing on the independent, like the agent, they just making their own actions. And we, at least when they're taking their policy, their policy is not joint policies. So again, two dimension of the messages. So and um, today I only focus on the second one. And Katia's question is about even this one, yeah, they taking their like once I have the policy, eventually they can take their policy independently. But to get that policy, like from the algorithm, looks like they need uh, other people's information. They need to know during the learning process what other person is doing. So that's the reason why people focus on the gradient play, because similarly to the um, sample based. A policy gradient from the MDP. So this one can be changed to be the sample based. And we haven't uh, like uh, studying that yet. Um, uh, Leonardo's paper in their paper that you have a one section like talking about sample base and uh, you can uh, take a look of that one but I feel there's a lot of room like uh, like to develop different variation of the master or even to have a like a different analysis. Yeah, but thank you for the question. Okay. I see, I see. <clears throat> So any other, <clears throat> sorry, any other questions from the audience? Uh, hi, um, thank you for the talk. I, I have a question. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering about the definition of potential games in the stochastic context, the stochastic games context. Um, is this a new definition? I thought I saw 2018 on the screen. Um, yeah, I, so you can continue to ask our questions. I can tell yeah, you. Yeah, so the question, um, the question sort of is, I was a little surprised to see that the potential was inside of the expectation and the sum. Basically, the potential function had, as its argument, a state action pair, rather than being, as its argument, you know, um, a, a joint policy or something like that. Is this standard? If this is a new definition, you said something, I think, about um, so, changing the definition going forward or something like that? Uh, that's actually a great question. So uh, let me think of the best way to answer the question. So I, I wouldn't say it's a new definition. So I can tell you some history. Actually, um, I work on something called a state-based potential gain when I was a grad student. That's like 13, 14 years ago. And at that stage, like I was, uh, but our state-based uh, potential function is totally different thing from this one. Um, 
So I can put it here. So you look at here, this is the paper. So Jason Martin, you can look at his paper. The title is a state-based potential game. It's very different. Um, for that one, I can tell you the intuition. So we have a definition about one is at each state, what is true satisfy. And secondly, we have another property to say once the state transitioned, then what's going to happen for the reward? Because you can imagine if there's no additional properties, it's like it's very hard to making sure once I'm doing my strategy, it can be aligned. So, so that's like some knowledge I had like about 10 years ago. So then recently, once we work on it, like we at the beginning we want to have a general global convergence for the general game. And we tried, uh, we didn't have much success. And I'm like, hey, we probably I mean, just let's see for the potential game what we can have. So then at the beginning, we want to just doing some uh, some like definition according to this way, and then we realize it's not enough. So then we dig into the literature. So the literature, uh, like I put in some paper here, that's the literature. Right now I find, I think there's another one. So um, people have a like slight difference, but I can tell you is uh, roughly all the definition is similarly to this guy, the JI minus JI equal V minus V, like what you're talking about. But you can, uh, but if you if you want this one, like this is the expectation, even expectation according to my initial state. If I want making this one be useful, right? I'm like, hey, uh, you can start with any kind of state. So then kind of naturally the definition will, will change to be this one. So this is, this is the policy look at here. Even I was writing down the summation of R-I-S-T-A-T, but this is actually the J C dot I prime and C dot minus I. So like it, it like so this is a like property almost I think all the paper want to have and uh, and some uh, I can be honest like when we were writing our first uh, version we had a mistake about the potential MPG and then we found that's not going to hold so what this means is uh, when you read some other papers I want to say some other papers have similarly issue and they just think they can have a simple conditions and then it has MPG but. I want to, unfortunately, no. So by using the multi-agent prison dynamo, you can easily show it need a lot of conditions. Yeah. It's a common answer, but if any audience know better answer, I'm happy to know more literature on the MPG. Yeah, this is what we find. Thank you. So because in the interest of time, maybe we will allow one quick question from audience, if there's any. Okay, can I have a question? Yes, so uh, I have uh, gone like uh, some of the papers by this uh, group of uh, Martin Novak on evolution of cooperation in stochastic games and all. And there also they show uh, cooperative behavior. Uh, they show this uh, two stage, um, two state, uh, sorry, a uh, kind of repeated prisoner's dilemma with a, on a Markov based uh, probability. Uh, and they also show pro means uh, cooperative behavior arising. Um, well, some uh, some small values of epsilon also. I saw some of the graphs. Uh, so, uh, do you know of these papers and could you say how uh, your work differs from that? Yeah, I, I couldn't hear you clearly. So uh, we, but, but it would be nice if we can put in that paper in the chat window. So we probably know, but I, I didn't hear you clearly. So I think for my- oh, okay, okay. So I, I'm just- putting yeah, we, that So paper. like the example, indeed coming from uh, like uh, Godot's paper, they have a paper talking okay. about Q learning for the comparative MDP. And we kind of took that example, like, uh, small, yeah, let me see which one. It's called decentralized uh, Q learning for stochastic games and teams, I guess. So that's paper you're talking about. It's a tech paper. Yeah, uh, for this one, we didn't read, but we, we had a, okay. another like paper similar that doing the Q learning in the okay. chat window. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, I think the okay. one that like, Katie mentioned, like this, the decided to kill learning by Gerdaud, uh, that's the paper where we like getting the idea about the uh, constructing our simple game. Yeah. 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 I see. Very nice. Thanks. Uh, let's thank Professor Leo again and uh, thank everyone for attending to this talk. Thank right, you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.